everybody, my name is Amanda from beautifulnursing.com and today I'm gonna try to explain in five minutes or less what myocardial infarction is, otherwise known as a heart attack, and what angina is. So a myocardial infarction, otherwise known as a heart attack, is when one or more coronary arteries become narrow or occluded and they start to block off blood, nutrients, and oxygen to the myocardial tissue of the heart muscle. This blockage is due to something called atherosclerosis, which is a hardening and narrowing of the arteries by a buildup of plaques in the artery walls. These plaques are made up of cholesterol, specifically what I remember, the lousy LDLs, not the heavenly HDLs, which are good for you. This is commonly seen in patients with coronary artery disease and can lead to tissue death, necrosis, ischemia, and angina, chest pain. So let's talk about the risk factors. A myocardial infarction is a blockage of blood flow to the heart muscle, so remember muscle. M for male or menopausal women 40 years or older, U for use of tobacco, S for smoking or stress, C for cholesterol level increase, L for large build, and E for elevated blood pressure. pressure. As the nurse, the first thing you wanna do is assess your patient, look at their vitals, assess their pain level, and you might notice they have a high heart rate, MBP, and a low to normal oxygen saturation with some shortness of breath. Since your patient's having chest pain, we wanna make sure we get them an EKG and a continuous cardiac monitor. And if you notice here, this is what it looks like to have a ST elevation. So let's talk about what a normal EKG looks like versus an ST elevation seen with an MI. So what does an ST elevation mean? It means that the heart is not getting sufficient enough oxygen, so you're gonna see that ST elevation. Now, there's a such thing as a STEMI versus an N-STEMI. I remember the ST for STEMI, that means that there is a complete blockage with the MI versus an N-STEMI, that N for no, there was not a complete blockage, it was a partial blockage and it did less uh, tissue damage to the myocardial muscle. So these are the two different types of um, MIs that you would see that you could differentiate through an ECG. Then you may receive some orders for some labs like myoglobin, that's an early marker for an MI, but troponin is considered the most preferred and the best test for an MI. So let's talk about some symptoms you would see on your patient. Just remember the word aches for my chest aches. A for anxiety and C for chest pain. Chest pain, otherwise known as angina, has different types. There is stable, which happens with exercise or stress and is usually relieved with nitroglycerin or rest, versus unstable, which is also called acute coronary syndrome. This can occur any time. It also increases in severity, occurrences, and duration, and it's not usually relieved by rest or nitroglycerin. And then finally, variant angina is due to coronary artery spasms during periods of rest. So back to symptoms, H for hypertension, so high blood pressure, E for elevated heart rate, and S for sweating or shortness of breath. So what are we going to do as the nurse? We're going to do MONA. MONA stands for M for morphine, which decreases the workload of the heart and is used for pain relief. O is for oxygen. This increases perfusion of the tissues. Um, this is usually seen in a nasal cannula, two to four liters. Um, as you can see here, I am turning up to two to four liters and it just hooks on here. N for nitroglycerin, it increases the blood flow to the heart because it is a vasodilator, so it opens up those arteries so it gets blood flow to the heart and reduces that cardiac oxygen demand. And then A for anticoagulants, so example heparin to prevent clots, um, but there is a bleeding risk, so make sure you're within therapeutic range of 60 to 100. The antidote is protamine sulfate. A for aspirin to prevent clots again. And then finally, 
A for Altiplase or TPA. This is the only one that's used to actually dissolve a clot. Okay, and finally, if your patient too um, had a surgical procedure done like a catheterization, you wanna make sure that your patient is on strict bed rest, that they're not overexerting um, their heart, um, and you wanna focus on what's called cardiac rehabilitation. So you wanna focus on um, their diet, exercise, smoking cessation, stress management, things like you know just blood pressure medications to keep um, their blood pressure down, again, to keep keep the workload of their heart down um, because we're trying to give it a rest. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review.